Hello, and welcome to Rav's Hall of Fame, where every time we have a guest who tries to convince me that their underrated favorites should be in my Hall of Fame. Today we have Owen Robinson, good Thank friend you. Owen Robinson. Just as a reminder, if you are watching this on CH2, what are you doing? Subscribe to Dropout. You could have been seeing this already. This has already been on Dropout for some time. <laughs> So please head on over to Dropout where you have a bunch of different <coughs> series and uh, you can see stuff like this earlier. Now, Owen. Yes. You are a big baseball guy. I am. And uh, I know this because we used to be on a sketch team Sketch together. team Redford, the very famous Redford <laughs> sketch team. As you all team. know. Yeah, yeah. The write-ups written up very, you know, all over L.A. Um, yeah, Raph and I, you know, we're good buddies. Yeah, and you did, you've did, you done stuff for College Humor before. I do, I do yeah. I mean, yeah, we yeah, have yeah. a series coming, Unmade. Yeah, I well, mean, yeah, I that's... wrote it, I directed it, I star <laughs> in it. No, I just am into it. You episodes. wear a lot of hats. I wear a lot of hats. Uh, um, yeah, this is the big, you know, CH family. Yes. Now, you, the person that you have come in to discuss is very apropos for you. <laughs> <laughs> because they are Africa, okay. It is a it is a uh, baseball person. Left handed pitcher, by the way. Are you left handed? Yeah. No way. Yeah, I was a left handed pitcher in high school. You never told me this. Yeah. Interesting. Here we go. Very How apropos. Still... I know. That's this is what's going to be. Everything. It's like a one two. You know, I, I got to <laughs> reveal my secrets here. You know. Yeah. It's a baseball player, but also a uh, drug friendly person. You have a knowledge of drugs. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this goes together quite nicely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's quite a buildup. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I've experimented a little bit, although now I don't know why the world thinks I'm like a big druggie or anything like that. The world thinks this? I, I mean, the world is watching. Hi, world. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, Bill Spaceman Lee. Bill Spaceman Lee. Is who we're going to talk about today. We uh -huh. each have our, our notepads. You know, to kind of go back and forth. What, you, why did you look at, are you just watching Facebook or something? <laughs> I'm like, I have notes. And you're like, I don't have notes. Yeah. You're just Googling <laughs> Pottery yeah, Barn I'm or something right now? I have, all of, I have all of Google at my fingertips. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes, I have written so, nothing down. Oh, yeah, good. Well, I got, I'm, lo I'm locked and loaded here, baby. Okay. Um, so Bill Spaceman Lee was a pitcher for the Red Sox. Uh -huh. From 69 to uh, 79. About. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. No, 69 to like 78, I think. Okay, that feels like a long time. But for baseball, I guess you can. You I mean, can it's eight or nine years time. with a team. But, so. still, but, for, but for a pitcher, that feels like a long time. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's, it's generally kind of like a long time. Yeah. Um, but one of his, you know, his he's kind of this like oddball, kind of like interesting dude. Yeah. And and it came in around a time where it wasn't uh, for pitchers to be like doing like we talked about like doing like yoga. You we know, talked he, about yeah. What he was we like? We don't talk before the show. <laughs> he was like the first person to like smoke weed. Yeah. In, the, like, in like major well, league publicly. baseball. Yeah, publicly. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to have it publicly yeah. be known that they, yeah, yeah, yeah partook in. Like the he had said marijuana. in a statement that he he put uh, weed on his pancakes, Which, and that was one of the reasons why, like the San Diego Padres owner Joan Crock wouldn't allow him to come to the Padres later in his career because she was afraid, you know, he was like smoking weed all the time and stuff. That's un yeah. unbelievable. Uh, also, I the sprinkling weed on pancakes. One, I don't know how well that would. Taste. It how, feels like it's, it would be taste. too crunchy. It's an odd statement. Yeah, because he literally just crunches up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he takes the buds or whatever. Yeah. And then just crunches it on yeah. to it. I guess it could feel like coconut or something like that. But the reason why I or hate oregano. coconut and why that's terrible because every time you eat a coconut or like if you had weed on your pancakes, it's all day of just doing like. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like just like trying to get coconut or weed out of your teeth. See, you know a lot about drugs. I'm you just saying. I know the concept. I know the concept of it. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, you, you also, I don't understand how you would get it to, because he says sprinkle on it. Yeah. In order to get high, it has to reach a certain temperature, right? In order to get the effects of the drugs. Um, I Maybe don't, he's already high when he's making it. Yeah, I don't know. Because you if, can't just bite off a marijuana flower yeah. and then get high from it that way. I mean, I, 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 I have no clue about that. I mean, I, I love the pitch about that I'm really, I'm not, but I do think this feels like an experiment that needs to happen <laughs> in the next episode. So if anybody's got weed, we'll just start crunching weed and see what happens. Okay, but so, all right, so he's crunching 
uh, weed on his pancakes. That gets him in trouble with San Diego later on. How does he leave Boston? Well, he leads he leaves Boston because uh, Don Zimmer at the time. Do you, you remember Don? You know Don Zimmer, like five foot tall. Don Zimmer, scrappy bulldog. He's the guy that was paid- he with the Dodgers. No. Okay, I'm thinking. Um, he's the guy that Pedro Martinez. Yes, that's the down. right. Old yeah. school, gritty, awesome Don Zimmer. Yes, I do remember this guy. Yeah. He he wasn't rushing the mound, but he was coming. He yeah, was yeah. walking towards the yeah. mound, and Pedro Martinez yes. just like. And I, I want a little. And here's my man, public public formed event. I want a little sidebar and just this quick little fight here. Yeah. Because when that happened, that was like a big thing. So, yes, okay, it so was a big deal. The, the Yankees he's so Red Sox, old. Yes. However, what people don't realize, Don Zimmer is a pit bull. Yeah. You know, I mean, he would kill you. So it wasn't like like Pedro Martinez was walking by some like old man in a park bench and right. him on the ground. That's Don true. Zimmer is is ready to fight. Uh-huh. He's probably the only eight year old man at the time who could like kick your ass. Uh-huh. So I mean, if you saw Don Zimmer coming by you, it's it's the it's a rabid dog. Okay. You know, he's got to do what he's got to do. Oh, you know. Boy. So that's my side note on Don Zimmer. Respect to Don Zimmer. Yeah. So. Uh, Don Zimmer's this old school kind of baseball guy, uh-huh. you know, kind of conservative, came from that generation. Bill Lee was kind of this, you know, long haired, full beard, kind of hippie, talking about, you know, weed on his pancakes and talking about, you know, doing yoga and all this kind of stuff. Uh, back See, to that's the, right. Uh, the, 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 the time period where we're at, Doing yeah, yoga, yeah, yeah. crazy. It's, it's an insane, you <laughs> it's know, a huge scandal. Because everybody, because now all the players do yoga, and they right. all live in these, you know, eat granola bars and eat in sleep in these chambers. Yes. Back in the day, like post game, it was just like a pack of Marlboros and a Twelver. You know, I mean, that was like that was the post. These are athletes. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what I talk about, like with Tom Brady now. It's like everyone keeps. If we hear forty year old Tom Brady one more time, right, right, you know what I'm right. saying? Tom Brady eats like avocado ice cream mm-hmm. and like Giselle blows feathers in his ears when mm-hmm, he sleeps or something, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. Back in those days, yeah, it was literally just like tall boys all day long, you know, have as many cigarettes as you can smoke post-game. Yeah. And like someone throws like an ice cube at you or something to Make, feel better. Uh, no, I'm not going to say that. What? But let's, no, no, never mind. Let's keep going. <laughs> Get back to the good old days. Yeah. So so Bill Spaceman Lee and Don Zimmer would get in these kind of big brawls, I think. Not, not brawls, but just kind of like... You know, Don, uh, he didn't he didn't like this kind of like hippie attitude. Yeah, they had you know? altercations. Yeah, yeah. They had, yeah, yeah, this they kind of hippie yeah, yeah. attitude and all this kind of stuff. And then so when the Yankees were playing the Red Sox in the World Series and like I think it was 76 or 75, um, Zimmer refused to pitch Billy and be, and kind of had like a little bit of like a vendetta against him. Right. Yeah. And then so Billy got traded to the Montreal Expos. Wow. Yeah. Okay. From which is 70, not even a team anymore. No. Uh, who are they now? The Washington Nationals. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. So from 79 to 82, then Billy went and pitched for the Montreal Expos. He was exiled. They kicked him out of the country. Basically, yeah. Basically. The only place that would take him. Yeah. Uh, oh, Canada. You know, but they, but he said he, he fit in a little bit more in that environment. Right. That makes sense. Because it's a little bit more of like a European community and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Exile is kind of cool. We'll put that in the in the exile category. So uh, that's one. Players exile. who have been exiled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we'll yeah, yeah. mark it on the list. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But here's the thing. Here's why I pitched you. So we have this Bill Spaceman Lee. Right. We have all this. You know, he's he's a real original, a real character yeah. of the game. But he also holds uh, the most wins by left-handed pitcher in Red Sox history, three twenty-one. That's crazy. I know it is crazy, and he won. Uh, according to my data, and uh, data, I use the term loosely, uh, won 17 games three years in a row in Boston. Nice. Yeah. Wait. Won That's 17 impressive. games three games in a row for Boston. What? Yeah. Wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Wait, let me hold on. Like, anyone have any glasses? Let me look at my data here. Yeah, won 17 games three years in a row for Boston. The original statement was correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. sounded right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no issue yeah. with it. You, you okay. went back and Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry. This is a court of law, correct? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm on the stand. Um, also, oh, you know what I do want to get into? What's Looking that? Looking at my data again. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> they used to do these cocaine relay races wait a minute <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah sorry that's like a bit of a bump up from from weed okay let me just who is they yeah, this is called a heighten oh. um 
So basically, him and like these boss. So to get it, this actually goes back to Zimmer. So they started this this group called I think they were called the Buffalo Herd or the Buffalo Guys. Where was, was this? This was in Boston. So it was basically these got this like this like five guys on the team got together and decided they were going to be the guys that like stayed out late and partied and like smoked weed. Yeah, you know, and it was guys. also like the middle seventies, like. You know, so cocaine became a big thing. Mm-hmm. So basically what they were saying that they would do is they would, like, go to a bar, go to someone's house, and line up all this cocaine mm-hmm. on a table mm-hmm. and do, like, a relay race where someone would, like, take the you dollar. You might need this a little closer. Somebody would take the dollar. <laughs> okay, you're good. Yeah, you would to get their full cocaine effect in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, so somebody would take the dollar, and then they would they would snort the cocaine and then pass it to the other person. Uh-huh. On this line, uh-huh. and that would be like a cocaine relay race. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. And these, and but he's the only person who gets in trouble. No one got in trouble for it. I mean, oh. they were just lore at this. You know, I mean, this is like the mid seventies. You know. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. They right. weren't doing like any type of drug testing or anything like that. My God. Yeah. You know what? So this is this is the thing that drugs have been in sports particularly baseball yeah for forever yeah yeah people know that i mean the red sox got in trouble five four or five years ago because it was rumored they were like drinking beer in the clubhouse like during a game right and like drinking beer in like the bullpen during a game yeah like they did during a game uh 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 babe ruth was on amphetamines or whatever oh yeah like mickey mantle is like one of the biggest like alcoholics of all time yeah yeah. so it's always been a thing yeah uh but there's been yeah they haven't been uh testing for it or they choose like who they get upset about <laughs> <laughs> yeah remember do you remember steve howe no he's like an early 80s like baseball player and had gotten kicked out of the league like six or seven times for doing cocaine six it was like doing seven? cocaine in, like the dodgers bullpen and stuff all i this. like yeah. that they kept bringing him back <laughs> yes that's a, a point ch- for steve howe <laughs> yeah yeah good job steve howe uh yeah another thing that fascinates me about this is that pitchers specifically seem to be one like the one uh, position in all of sports that attracts the most eccentric types yeah i would agree with they're that. almost it's yeah, like yeah. when you watch chef's table and you're yeah, watching yeah, yeah. These chefs and you're like wow they're crazy yeah that's kind of like, like a tattoo of a pig on their arm and yeah, stuff. yeah yeah it's like a bunch of it's beyond superstition yeah uh and they all like have their their own like artistic i don't know they like put it's like art to them yeah well remember brian uh who's the giants pitcher brian oh Wilson. yeah yeah, yeah. you know yeah. with the big beard and yeah, like yeah. all this like gone i mean that probably starts from like even like into like major league with like charlie shane and you right. know like, That's the, a like the big like crazy relief pitcher and stuff yeah um but yeah, I mean, Bill Space Manley definitely was like one of those guys that like fits into that category. So he goes sure. to the Expos. Uh-huh. How does his career work out there? Not great. He did Raph. so I well. Mean, you know, yeah, yeah. Not <laughs> he did great. So well in Boston, mm-hmm. and now you're telling me that it it drops off a little bit. His performance. well, I mean, I you know, I think because here's what happened. So when he's in Boston, he's pitching on the mound. He's pitching, you know, as a start one day. Carlton Fisk is behind the plate. Lou Pinella is on the Yankees at that point. They're pitching against the Yankees. They have this big brawl. Pinella slides home. He spikes Carlton Fisk. Huge brawl. Oh, yeah, you yeah, got fight now. Yeah, you huge brawl uh, breaks out. So everyone's, everyone's brawling. Everyone's on the mound. Craig Nettles, who was the third baseman at the time for the Yankees, comes over and gets Bill Lee in a headlock and slams him into the ground. Oh, that's On not his nice. pitching shoulder. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the brawl happens, and you can see in the fight, like, Billy gets up, and his arm is just, like, totally numb. Oh. Yeah, it's just, like, dislocated or something? Oh, it's, like, it's dislocated, it's 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 dead, it's just, like, totally numb and all that. Yeah. So that was in Boston, and that really kind of affected his career. You know, I mean, nowadays, I don't think players in a fight would try to actively kind of do something to, like, damage another person's career. Yeah. But in the 70s... Apparently that's he gets cool. thrown out pretty fast. Apparently that's cool league. Yeah, because yeah. he just pile drived him right into the ground right. on his pitching shoulder. Right. You know. Well, here's the thing. I don't know if you know this about me. Well, of course you would know because we have known each other for uh-huh. a while. I am very strong. Yeah. So yeah, here's yeah. the thing. Yeah. His his Hulk like. <laughs> yeah, and that was the first thing I would have said to you when you're like, "Do you know this about me?" Like, strong would have been number one. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thank you. Like me with drugs, strong would have been number one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, 
so for me, I don't know what column this goes into to allow someone else to murder your arm. I think that's that's the that's a point. Okay. I mean, he didn't go. I mean, that, I don't think one money. I don't know if that's that like had. the clinical term either of like murder your arm. <laughs> you know, I don't think Billy. Did, I mean, he was close. Billy did get off the mound. And go like, you know, you murdered my arm. I don't know if you know this about me, but here's the you thing like about to murder me. arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're the murderer of all arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can't call it murder if it's justified. Uh, That's true. Yeah. Uh, so okay, so he's in he's in Montreal. Mm-hmm. He he gets hurt because his arm. No, his arm. He was hurt in Boston. And oh, then, this yeah. happened in Boston. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so sorry. It, he was hurt, and then you know he's having these kind of issues with Don Zimmer and all of this stuff. So then basically, so this is the good th- the good thing also about Billy, which kind of like, so one of his. Uh, he got really upset because they traded one of the person, uh, one of his buddies in Boston. Yes, I heard. And about this happened this. again in Montreal. So Bill Lee's also this kind of guy who like loves to like stand up, you know, for his teammates right. and all he that kind of stuff. Right, stood up for his teammate that yeah. he felt they had done yes. wrong. Yes, and him so by he got into it with a little bit of like Boston management, and he got into it with Don Zimmer again. And so basically, they were like, you know, we're just going to trade you to the Expos. And then he gets to the Expos, and his career isn't what it once was Mm -hmm. because his arm got so messed up by that uh, Yankee brawl. Um, So then they try to trade uh, or release one of his buddies in Montreal, Mm -hmm. and Billy has has had it. So Billy was supposed to pitch that day, tells them, walks out of the clubhouse, goes to a bar— yeah, and gets drunk. Okay, and comes back uh-huh. and tell and and then everybody in the expo is like, "You're too drunk to pitch. You're not pitching." Right. And then like shortly after that, he is released. Oh and, yeah, that's yeah. suspicious. I think it was because of that. But showing up drunk to work. Yeah, <laughs> could have been. Yeah, yeah, hammered to work. Yeah, that's a little bit frowned upon even in the seventies. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. Okay. So. So that's kind of like the Billy story a little bit, you know. Yeah. And so then post post major leagues, he's now doing all this work. Uh, you know, he does this uh, baseball league in Cuba, and he's a real kind of like international baseball man now. Right. You know, like he goes to these countries, whether it's like Dominican Republic or Cuba, where he will play baseball and and you know have these kind of uh, international friendly games and all this kind of stuff. Uh-huh. So Billy is still looked at as the, you know as this kind of uh, you know, interesting character in in baseball. Yeah. You know, and so they called. So we should get to why they called him the spaceman. Why did they call him the spaceman? So they called him the spaceman because he had a pitch, which is called, I guess, in in baseball terminology, the Ephus pitch. Ephus sounds like an old man. It's, it's Greek for nothing, meaning is nothing. Oh. So it's just kind of like this like junk ball kind of like slow curving pitch uh-huh. that goes to the plate at like 50 miles an hour. So right. Like, so it's a real kind of like junky kind of pitch. Tricky. Deceitful. Yeah. And and so apparently uh, there's a million nicknames for it. Ephus is like the number one. And he got – and he's called the Spaceman because it felt like a space ball coming in from the map. Right, right. You something, know. Something from another world. <laughs> Uh, Coming from outer space. Yes. I got to tell. Well, the thing of standing up for the teammates, and he did that twice. Yes. With with his neck on the mm-hmm. line, and none of the uh, baseball teams have lots of players. They do. They they have. I don't know. It's like yeah. thirty people on the roster, uh-huh. and he was the only one that stood up for his teammate both those times. That will put in. I guess we'll call it wokeness. We'll put that in the wokeness category. Billy was the first player. Was the first player. Uh, baseballer to really be, you know, you could say, yeah, was a real was a real woke player before his time. Right. Don't Stand- say that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it comes good out of my mouth. <laughs> it, fe- it feels right, you know. And if there's anybody that should be talking about wokeness, it's me. <laughs> You're yeah, right. I mean, there's That's nobody true. more woke than I. That's true. You know. <laughs> Uh, okay, this is great. I do. I mean, I I am in I am enjoying learning about this person. Uh, so you you have. The right now, I'm I'm I have positive feelings towards it. Now, his career ends uh, prematurely, maybe, or at least he considers it to be premature. Well, I mean, I think he he's, feels like he can still go on. Yeah, I mean, he, he has bad knees. The arm really kind of killed him. But I also think like Bill Lee kind of you know uh, went into the cornfield, if you will. Yeah. You know, field of dreams reference, where he just kind of like he's one of these journeymen baseball players that just kind of like disappeared into thin air, you know? Yeah. 
He, he's a, he's a real treasure of the game, yeah. but you gotta you gotta dig for it a little bit, you yeah. know. Now, so here we are at a low point of this man's story, mm -hmm. and everybody knows you are not defined by your failures; you are defined by your comebacks. Does Very he nice. have a what, so what? What does he do? Does he reinvent himself after? Because ba he basically gets blackballed, right? Basically, like, no he, yeah. Basically, he gets blackballed, and after that. Um, you know, he started dabbling into politics. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, he, after everything that yes. we know about so, Bill Lee at yes. this Bill Spaceman Lee, yeah, yeah. of course he gets into so politics. So he basically, in, in <clears throat> 1988, I believe it is, uh -huh. he becomes a write-in uh, write candidate. Uh -huh. And running on the no guns, no butter, both will kill you. That was his motto. No butter. No butter, no guns, both will kill you. <laughs> Bill Spaceman Lee, everybody. You know? Um, I mean, he's not wrong. <clears throat> no, he's not wrong at all. You know? Yeah. Did it really gain as much traction in the country as you think? Did it? N it did not. We're not referring to President Bill Spaceman Lee right now. Maybe. Uh -huh. You know? So he was basically a write-in candidate. Um, and then he did that a few other times. And I think it was never really like a serious, like, political, you know, uh, you know, a political endeavor. I think it was just something to once again kind of throw a wrench into the uh, the norms of society at he's that point. He's a shit Yeah, he exactly. He's, yeah, pot. yeah. He's a pot stir. He's a shit stir. Mm -hmm. You know, Billy's the kind of guy, yeah, that will, uh, that wants to, you know, see the norm kind of shifted and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Cool dude. Well, he's done many things. Yeah. He's a jack of... All trades, master of one? Yeah. Don't steal that. That's mine. Yeah, yeah. I love that quote. The t-shirt <laughs> that says that. So, yeah. I mean, I think Bill Lee is definitely a, a Hall of Fame caliber personality. Y yes. In the, personality. Yes. In the Got annals of, of baseball, you know, he's somebody that I didn't know a ton about. You didn't know a ton about. No. But Bill Lee is definitely the type of guy who... Uh, we should remember and, and revere. And he is in the Red Sox Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. So no he's, kidding. Yeah, so they, the Red Sox, because of his nine-year stint, because of his 321 wins as a Southpaw, right. um, uh, is in the Red Sox Hall of Fame. So they love him. Yeah, they yeah, but ugh, Boston. I don't know. That might be a that might be a mark against. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't. That Boston it, yeah, really yeah, yeah. loves. I'm yeah. not sure. I, it's it's Red Sox Hall of Fame is Billy and right. a can of Budweiser. <laughs> so they're both in the. Sorry, Boston. But people, yeah, Boston. Boston's fine. I just it's yeah, me yeah. that's the issue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the city of Boston's great. It's when Raph goes there is when all hell breaks loose. Yeah, he's the problem in Boston. What yeah, do you yeah. think it is about pitchers or pitching that attracts? The this eccentric type of artistic person. What do you think that is? There's, is it, there's two things. There's one. There, it's one. Very rarely do jobs exist in life as a starting pitcher where you can work one out of five days a week. Okay. So you can grow like a dope beard. You can like smoke weed, do your drugs. Secondly, as a relief pitcher, there's very few jobs on planet Earth where you only have to work like 20 minutes out of your day. <laughs> if that. If that. If they call you. Yeah, yeah. If they call you. Exactly. Yeah. So a baseball, what's great about baseball is it's the only sport where you see people actively eating. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like the amount of sunflower seeds that are consumed in a bullpen or on, in a in a dugout during mm -hmm. a game mm -hmm. is really unfathomable. Mm -hmm. Or you even know? just in the Outfield. The amount of salt, the amount of everything. Yeah. So I think the you know as a regular baseball player, first base, second base, third base, you have to play every day. You kind of have to keep in shape. That's right. Whereas a pitcher, you're working one out of five days a week, and then as a relief pitcher, 20, 30 minutes tops if they call, <laughs> if they punch your card. You know, I mean, I don't even know how it works in a bullpen if they just kind of like duck when they see the manager <laughs> looking if they don't want to work that day, or kind of like point to like the guy next to him. You know, yeah, yeah. so you can grow a full beard. You can probably like you know, have a couple beers cracked, you know, right. left and right or whatever. Right. Um, so I think that's what that's what lends itself to having these kind of like oddball dudes that have to like occupy their time when they're not fully invested in a baseball game. That is an excellent point. I had never thought about that before. And uh, I don't know if you know this about me. <laughs> but the strong, number, number one strong. <laughs> yeah, number one strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Number two, wrecker in Boston. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Number three, lover of uh, Nancy Myers movies. Mur Murder's yeah, yeah. Arms. 
murders uh, arms for. I guess yeah. you could you could lump yeah, that yeah. in with the strong part. Yeah. But I also am a lover of art. And oh and, yeah yeah yeah. And the artistic uh, personnel. Yeah, yeah. I just think yeah. it's interesting. All like, those photos on your Instagram of you at the Louvre. I loved all of those. Yeah yeah. If you don't if you don't go to the MoMA once a day. Your day shot. Yeah, it's I know over. that about you. Yeah, yeah. What am yeah. I supposed to do? What time is it? Yeah. Oh shit! You okay. gotta get to the MoMA. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I am ready with my verdict. Uh, okay. Yeah. Here we go. What do you think? I think, I think Hall of Fame. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah. I'm just throwing my opinion out there. I'm gonna still go with Hall of Fame on my side. Yeah. All right. Here's what I say about this. Bill Spaceman Lee is. In my Hall of Fame. Yay. <laughs> we did it, Bill. Wow. Wonderful. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. We spared no expense. We spared no expense. <laughs> wow. You Very guys nice. Don't see it, but there is an audience yeah. just over there. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Thank you so much for uh, watching, for listening. Uh, again, if you're watching this on CH2, Get on over to Dropout. We have plenty of series, and this has already been released there uh, for some time. Um, thank you so much for watching, and hope you come back. Hi, I'm Raphael from College Humor. Click here to subscribe, click here for more fun stuff, and click here to leave a detailed message. Uh huh. You what? You didn't. I'd have did the same thing.